Hello everybody. Welcome back to my workshop and welcome back to my garage. This is going to be the second video on the Pango Flying V kit. What this video is going to be taking a look at is getting the guitar basically to this point right here. But first what I'd like to do is just make a uh, address a question that I had from the opening video for this kit. If you remember correctly when I first unboxed it, the truss rod was actually sticking out through this hole here. Uh, it didn't move by itself. My guess is, is when it went through the factory, the person laid the truss rod in to the end here rather than butted it up against the other end before the fretboard was glued on. Uh, there was no binding or anything like that associated with it, and I was literally able to give it a couple taps with the mallet to slide that truss rod in, and then with considerable force to push the truss rod in the rest of the way in. And right now I have it seated fully in. But the question was from one person asked, does, shouldn't the truss rod be glued in? Because he was concerned about it maybe moving and rolling when you go to uh, tighten or loosen the truss rod. And no, the truss rod doesn't need to be glued in. And the reason why is in this one, it was a double acting truss rod, which is very similar to this truss rod right here. It's a quarter inch wide, but it's deeper than a quarter inch wide. So once this drops into the channel, it's not gonna twist because the channel holds it in. And as a reference, I've got this neck here, a neck that I'm currently working on, and you can see the channel in here. When I drop the truss rod in, you can see it fits in that slot and it's not gonna roll. What I do when I build one though, is because I don't want the truss rod to rattle in the slot, if you got it set more to a neutral setting and it's not pushing one way or another on the guitar neck, uh, there's the possibility that it could rattle. Especially if your truss rod slot is just a touch deeper to where there's a gap between the, the top of the truss rod and the fretboard. So what I always do is I take like some RTV sealant. Uh, basically, I, I use a flexible glue similar to shoe glue or shoe goo or something like that. And what I normally do is I'll put a drop in the channel at each end of the truss rod and one in the middle as I push the truss rod in. That way that glue expands, but it holds the truss rod so it keeps it from rattling. It's not to hold the truss rod into the neck because as soon as you put any tension on the truss rod inside the neck, it's not gonna move because now it's bowing one way or the other. Uh, so there's pressure on the neck and the fretboard. That truss rod is not going to slip out. The same as on this neck. It did not slip out during shipment. For the body, what I did is it had the flame maple top on it. So I used Angelus leather dies. And what I did is I put a black die down first. And you'll see it in the video. And then I sand that back uh, to get most of the black off. And that way the black's just down in the deeper grain. So after the black went on and I sanded everything back, then I put the orange and the red on. And you can see the orange kind of here in the center. And it comes out to the red. And then I feathered in the black on the outside to give it that black burst. So I let it dry for 24 hours and I took some steel wool and hit the top of the guitar with the steel wool. And that's just going to knock off that last little bit of dye that's sitting on the surface. And that'll give you more of the color. Then I took sanding sealer and sprayed three coats of sanding sealer on it. The reason why I do that is that's to lock that dye into the wood because if that dye gets wet again, it's going to kind of reactivate and it's going to move. It's going to change the colors. It's going to come off on the rag. But by putting that sanding sealer over the top of it, if you got a damp rag or whatever, like when I was doing the glue up for the neck, when I wiped that glue, excess glue off, it didn't bother the, the dye at all because it had that sanding sealer on it. And that's why I did the body separate before I glued the neck in. We're making some good progress on this. So let's get rolling. So what we're going to do to start off for finishing the body is we're gonna put some black dye on it first. So what I've done is I've got the binding max masked off. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's just enough to kind of keep the dye off of it a little bit and I'll varnish it down. What I'll have to do is I'll have to pull this off and then redo it when I go to do the final finish. And I'm just using a bit of an old t-shirt and I'm using Angelus leather dyes uh, to do this with. This stuff goes a long way so as you're going to see, like I said, what I want to do is I'm putting this black on and you can already see it start to pop the figure on that wood. And then what we'll do is we'll sand this black back. That'll leave some of the black down in the deeper grain. And then when the red goes on top of it, it'll really come out. 
and I'm going to let this dry for about 24 hours before I do anything with it before I go to sand it back. Just want to make sure I get a good, good even coat. And this is why I'm doing the black before I glue the body on because that way I can get in access to this area here without having to worry about getting in between the neck and the body. There we go. It's a good even coat over everything. It's good even coverage. You can kind of see that grain pattern coming out a little bit there. What I'll do is I'll sand that back and then, uh, like I said, the red going on over top of it will really make that pop back out. So this body's had uh, basically about a day and a half to dry with the black on it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a orbital sander and I'm going to be careful. I'm going to use a low grit or a high grit paper like uh, what, 220. Well, actually, I'm going to use 320, a used piece. And I want to carefully sand back the black that's on here. I need to be careful because it is a thin veneer. So I am going to take it nice and easy. I'm not going to be pressing down very hard with the sander. And that's why I'm using an a older piece of sandpaper. And I'm going to see how that does, see how that takes off the black so I can go ahead and move forward with the red. So let's get rolling. Okay, so you can see I've got it mat I've got it sanded back. I didn't go too aggressive because like I said I wanted to make sure I didn't go through the veneer. But I've still got a pretty good grain pattern. And so what I'm going to do is it's sanded back with the with the black. I've retaped my binding as much as possible. It's peeling up, but it'll it'll protect it a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with a yellow first. I'm going to do kind of yellow here in the middle. And then I'm going to do red blend in the red and then I'm going to feather in some black at the edges. So we're going to see how that looks. And this yellow is going to pull up some of the black. The same with when I put the red down. It's going to pull up some of the black as well. And what I'm hoping for is just a bit of a burst with the uh, yellow transitioning to the red. That's my uh, that's my goal. The red is going to be pretty overpowering. It will go on quite dark. But you can see how that red or that black popping out now. It's really coming out. You can kind of get an idea of what's happening here is the that yellow is blending in with that red and pulling it out. I want to go down the horns a little bit with each of it. There we go. And you can see that's lightened up that red a little bit down through there. Kind of giving that burst effect. Get a little bit more there. And now what I'm going to do is just feather in a little bit of black around the edges and then blend that in with the red. I'm going to make it a little bit darker up in the nose. All right. And then what I'm going to do now is with my yellow rag, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of red on that. And I'm going to use that to blend in blend in the sides here. See how that red's pulling that black in and it's smoothing out those feather lines. There we go, that's looking good. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through now again and wash it with yellow. Alright, I think that looks pretty good. We're going to let that dry. Once it's dry, we'll hit it with some steel wool and then hit it with a couple coats of sanding sealer to lock that in before we do the full finish on the guitar. So overall, that came out really nice. I'm happy with how that looks. So this die job's had a couple days to dry now. Uh, and what we're going to do right now is get ready and go ahead and scrape the binding. 
and then I'm going to take some steel wool and hit the top of this. That'll knock the top color off uh, any dye that's sitting on top of the wood. Uh, that'll knock that off and it'll give a truer indication of what the covers, color's going to be. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take a razor blade and carefully go around the perimeter of the guitar on the binding and scrape any stain that's on the binding. I'm going to do that off camera. Uh, I'm just using a straight razor blade and very carefully just scraping the binding. All right, so I've went through and I've scraped the binding. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just go over it with some steel wool. And this is going to bring the top of the die up. And you're going to see it lighten up a little bit. You can definitely see it here around where the black is, especially where it's pulling up some of that. And it's making that burst just a little bit lighter, which is exactly, which is completely fine. As it brings that burst up, it's going to make that grain pop just a little bit more. I didn't show this on camera, but I did mask off the sides. I masked off my neck pocket because I didn't want to get any sanding sealer in there. I want to make sure that's bare wood. And then I went ahead and hit the body with three coats of sanding sealer. So as you can see, it looks pretty good. Uh, that's really going to pop out once the clear coat goes on it. I mentioned that I hit this with sanding sealer. And what I used, I just want to show you what I used to do that. Uh, this is a Mohawk product. I, you can order it from Amazon. I think that's where I got it. It's a pre-catalyzed sanding sealer. And what I did with that is basically I just hit the body, did a really light coat, the first coat, and then let that one dry for about 30 minutes. And then I went back with a heavier coat, let that dry for 30 minutes, and I went back with a heavier coat. And the purpose of hitting it with the sanding sealer is to lock this dye in because this is a basically a water-based dye so if it was to get wet again it would change the color because you start blending more and more color so uh, what i did is i masked off the body as you saw and then i hit it with the sanding sealer to lock that in that way when i do the glue up here in just a few minutes when i glue the neck in i can clean the glue off without any problem without getting the uh, colors to run i'm also going to tape on the edges that way any squeeze out i can probably just peel off with the tape as it comes off and that'll keep a cleaner line on it. So I just wanted to go over the sanding sealer. There are several different types of sanding sealer. Uh, if you're doing a nitrocellulose lacquer finish, there's a nitrocellulose sealer that's good. This pre-catalyzed sealer works great for an oil finish. So if I was gonna go with oil finish, a hard wax oil or tongue oil, something like that, this pre-catalyzed sealer works a lot better uh, than the nitrocellulose lacquer sealer does. So that's why it's good to have this on hand. So we're ready to glue up. Uh, what I'm using is just Tight Bond Original and uh, I'll pan down to the guitar here in just a second. I've got my clamp set up. Uh, I've got the tape on the body where I got, want it so I can get the uh, glue off the figured wood on top easier than just rubbing it or without spreading it all around and making a mess. So hopefully that works okay. Like I said, I've got my clamps. Very simple clamping on this, just two on the neck and then I usually put a C-clamp that holds down into the pickup cavity. That way it uh, Make sure that it doesn't it doesn't tilt or anything, and that way I get constant pressure all the way across when I'm, when I'm uh, gluing the neck in and clamping it down. So let's get rolling with this. I've got clamping calls, uh, one for the back, and then also one for the uh, radius, one for the fretboard. And what I'm using is just this uh, glue brush. I got it from Lowe's. Uh, silicone bristles on it, so it's good for spreading the glue around. And what it does is, uh, because it's silicone, the glue doesn't stick to it. If you want to let it dry, you can just let it dry and then pop it off. And the secret with wood glue. You know, you see people all the time put it on and it squeezes out everywhere and makes one heck of a mess. You want to cover the wood, but you don't necessarily need to drown the wood. You want a little bit of squeeze out because that tells you that, yes, you did glue where you wanted to and everything glued the way it's supposed to, but you don't need a lot because the squeeze out, if you get a bunch of squeeze out, that just means, that just means you put way too much glue in there. What I want to make sure though is that I have glue on all the surfaces that I want to glue up. That's where this brush is nice because you can get right up in there. Right up to the edge of where you need to be. Make sure you got glue everywhere. That way I know when this net goes in, it's going to go in perfectly. I'm just putting a little bit on each surface. There we go. Go ahead and get this in. And that glue is going to make the wood swell a little bit. So you want to be careful of that. I'm just going to 
clamp this real quick to let me clean up any glue I got right now. Perfect. This one I don't really need a clamping call on because this one's holding in the, bot the bottom of the neck pocket. So we're good there. Now with these, I've got my radius clamping call with some cork on it for the top. Come on this side as well. And now you can see the neck is good and clamped in. You can see good squeeze out. Let's see if we can get, see if we can get that picture in there. Good squeeze out along the joint on the sides. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and clean that up because uh, there's no need it being there. Clean up as much as I can anyway because I definitely don't want my, I'm going to have to change, do something real quick because I just realized I'm about to glue my uh, clamping call. I'm glad I caught it because if I hadn't, it would have not been pleasant. Now we're good and clamped up. We've had good squeeze out everywhere and uh, we've been able to clean up the majority of the squeeze out. So that's good. The neck's in and seated where it needs to be. All right, so that's all glued up now. Had a little bit of a, a mess there that I caught in time. Uh, I'm glad I caught it because if not, we'd have had a big block of Padute glued to the bottom of the body and that would not have been good. Uh, so I was able to clean that up. We've got good squeeze out on the joint. Uh, looks like a great joint all the way around. It says it's supposed to be clamped for 30 minutes to an hour and then you're okay to pull the clamps off. When I'm clamping up a guitar, whether it's gluing a body on, uh, a top on the body or a fretboard on the neck or even you know gluing body blanks together or neck blanks together I always leave it clamped up for 24 hours it's just I'm not in that big a hurry so uh, we're gonna leave this clamped up and then uh, we'll come back to it tomorrow I went ahead and pulled this out of the clamps I had glued up very nice Let's see if we can get in here there's no gaps at all there at the body joints. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is when I sand it, I'm going to smooth these out just a little bit because there is a little bit of a step there and I want it to just be a nice smooth transition on both sides. And also going to take just a little bit off the bottom here uh, to kind of round that in there. So that's going to wrap this video up. Please, if you like what I'm doing, click like, click subscribe. It's really helping me out. Leave a comment below. I'd really like to get your feedback on what you think so far. Uh, overall, so far, I'm pretty impressed with the kit. It's gone together pretty well. The neck glued in very well. It went nice and straight. Uh, no problems at all gluing the neck in. So the next step on this in, in video number three, what we'll be doing is we'll be doing the initial sand on the body, doing the grain fill, doing any fill of the voids. Uh, there's some nicks and dings in it that I don't think I'm going to be able to sand out, so I may have to fill those. Uh, but I've this guitar is going to get a black back on it, so it is going to be a paint finish on the back. So that means I can probably get away with doing some epoxy fills if I need to. So we'll go from there. So until next time, thank you for stopping by the channel and take care. <music>